Hey YouTubers, Electric Adventures here with the start of a new series. Um, I realised uh, on my website you can actually freely freely download um, some of my early games. Um, there are pictures for some of them, but there's no video. And I thought, well, I might as well, since I needed to make videos of the games anyway, um, I thought I'd do a little series where I went through each game, um, we maybe have a look at a little bit of the code, uh, play the game, and talk about it a little bit, and that way it would um, kill two birds in one stone. So, um, and hopefully some of you guys out there will be interested in it. So, one of the, the first games I'm going to cover, I'm not strictly going to do them in order. Um, and uh, there are ones like, um, you know, like there's a sprite edit, it's not really a game. So I'm going to stick to the games. Um, now, they are all available for those interested. I put together a um, floppy disk that you can um, buy for the um, for the MSX, which is the image you'll see above me here. Um, and on it are all of these games. But you can actually freely download uh, most of them and play them in an emulator if you want. So the one we're going to look at this time is Lunar Lander, which is, is one of the first ones that I wrote. I used to be fascinated with... Um, um, Lunar, you know, the Lunar Lando arcade game and whether I could write my own version. One of the very first games I wrote for any computer, even for my, um, uh, would help if I actually typed it correctly, Lunar Lun. Right, so I'm just loading it from a floppy here. So, here our screen. Now, if we just uh, list it, I'll let it go. As you can see, going through, blah, 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 blah. Right, so there is a fair bit of code here. A little bit of data there, a little bit more data there, but it's not that long. So, um, up, to, up to line 760 with 10 spacings, which actually means it's only 76 lines long. So, it shows what you can do in a little bit of code. So, we'll play it first. Um, so it just comes up with a little intro here. You can select a skill level, which is sort of like the uh, starting level. Press one. Now it uses basic. So this is all written in basic line drawing things. So we have a sprite here for our main ship. I've got a bit carried away there. Now it's not quite as me. As the arcade game, you you have a little bit of leeway. Uh, the arcade game is quite mean. And also, the arcade game zoomed in when you got close to the surface too. Of course, that's not practical um, when you're dealing with a basic written game. But this basically, basically gives you the feel of the gameplay. Oops. And I got a high score. Woohoo! All right, let's try a skill level two. We'll just see what the difference is. I can't remember. I haven't actually. I think it's higher gravity. So see, I'm actually falling faster. So using a lot more fuel. See our fuel is running out there. Ho ho ho! Let's manage that. Now, I didn't make this on easy level before, so I don't think I'm going to make it on this one. But you never know. Oh. <laughs> As you can see, it's quite a uh, simple but fun Lunar Lander game. Um, almost. Um, we'll have one more go because I wouldn't mind uh, trying to get to the um, the third level. Right, so the gravity is much higher on skill level two. I even sunk into the land a little bit there, so I've got a reasonable amount of tolerance there. Got it. 
Woohoo! Now, so this one, uh, it's got the uh, spot very much on the left, so you've got to get rid of all of your... sideways motion. So obviously in the original arcade game you had um, multiple landing sites per scene with different multiplier point values. I obviously didn't capture that quite, but I managed to come up with some... I don't know how I managed to do that. Ooh. <laughs> yes, by the way, I was quite a um, mean software developer back in the day. So there we go, showed you a few of the levels. You know, high scores and things like that, so it was quite a good fun game. Uh, the game wasn't released by itself, it was released in what was called Program Pack 1, um, with uh, three other titles, one being that Sprite Diviner I talked about, talked about earlier. So for those who are interested, let's have a quick look at the code. So, uh, let's clear up our screen. I need to load it again because I'm loading it for the disk. So it's sort of thing when you escape out of the game, it goes back to the menu. So we just need to load it instead of running it. Uh, and I do apologise. It has decided to rain very hard right now, which is probably the, not the most convenient thing. So let's list up to line 100. Right, that should just fit. Um, so. Reading through this, our very first line sets up our screen mode, which is the high resolution graphics mode. Um, sets up a couple of things, sets a high score, opens a uh, file to our screen, which allows you to put text on it. The next line is our, or well, next two lines are inserted to go back to the menu on the disc, so ignore those. Then we actually get into our game proper. Um, and it said these are squished multiple things onto one line because it saves uh, memory. Not that this game would have used a lot of memory. So we clear the screen um, preset, so that's basically putting, setting the current position of the cursor, or the, um, not the cursor, well the graphical cursor, at a spot on the screen. So we want 60 across, 90 down, we set colour equals 9, and we print the word Lunar Lander. So that's how our title gets on there. Then we position at 50 across 120 down, we change the colour to 11 and we print high score. And we put equals high, so the actual high is a variable that has the score on it. And if you look at line 10, that, that sets a 300 when we first start. Um, now we go to the next line, line 30, uh, which has a restore statement. It's to do with reading in data from our um, later on our listing, so don't worry about that for the moment. Um, but we read in the data, which is basically our sprite table. So uh, it's a for loop going through 17 times as the rain gets noisier. Um, and for each of those, I read it in, and at the end of it, oh, I pity I can't point. Can I point with my cursor? Oh look, no that's probably not going to record that. I can't point when I'm doing this type of recording. But that basically sets up our sprite shapes as the rain gets even louder. Um, yeah, that's what happens when we try and make videos nowadays, so as long as we don't float away. Um, then we display it for 940, we display our enter our school level and we wait for somebody to do that and go around in the loop. We're not even going around a loop, we're just waiting for somebody um, for, to enter a number. If it's not a number between 1 and 3, we ignore it, and then we go around. So we go into uh, line 60 where we clear the screen, we set up some values, which is score 0, fuel 80, uh, levels 1, gravity is our, the level that you picked divided by 10. 
I can't remember what that video poke does, so we'll leave that one for the moment. And on our level we go to a particular line. Now these are the lines that are following, they restore our, our data read point to a specific area in the listing, which is where the data to draw the points of the landscape. And then we go to line 60. So we'll go to we'll list from line 160 to say 200. So at line 160 we read in three values into n, x and y. Um, we set a point and then we read the next, oh I see n is then probably the number of points and x and y is our first starting position of our thing. So say we started over, sorry, other way, we started over here, that would be our first point. And then we read in the next x, y, and we draw a line from there to there. And then we might draw a line to there, to there, oops, to there. Everything's reversed on the camera, I do apologize. To there, and then down to there. You get the idea. So with a certain number of points, you can draw a landscape as the rain gets louder. Lovely. Um, so those couple of lines from 160, 170, draw the landscape, the paint statement paints the um, starts painting and filling in the filling in that you see so it fills up the landscape um, and then it reads the last two points and that tells us where our landing platform is and so that's line 180 and it actually draws a line, see that line statement there, it draws from x, y to x plus 20, y plus 8, and that draws that little rectangle. And it's got a couple of extra things on the end of it, so comma 14 is the colour we want, which is that grey colour, and comma bf is for block field, so it'll actually draw a field rectangle. So MSX Basic and Spectre Video Basic 4 were actually very powerful. So line 190, we're getting right into our game now, we x and y are set, this is the X and Y position of our lunar lander. Um, y C and uh, sorry X C and Y C are our chain current change in velocity. Uh, can't remember what D is. Maybe that's our direction. Yep. And then we put our sprite zero, which is our ship, at X and Y in color 15, and comma D is our sprite shape. And I've got the the various directions of the ship, and you can turn it right around. Each is one sprite shape. Um, and then we draw a um, a line down the bottom. With some, oh, that's our fuel. Right, okay, we draw our fuel. Uh, line 200, we go and get uh, the value of stick 0 and stick 1. So that's stick 0 is the keyboard joystick, which is the cursors, and stick 1 is the first joystick port. If the value of that is 3, then um, we rotate our direction and if our direction has gone all the way to 9 that means we've gone all the way around so we change it back to 1. Okay, list 210 to 250. Next, I said, this isn't a very long one. Um, if A is 7, so now we've pressed the other direction, uh, we want to rotate the other way. So it's very similar to the other line. So 220, there's that V poke again. Sorry, I can't remember what that one does. Then we go if strig. Now strig means we're testing joystick buttons this time. We do strig 0 and strig 1, which will mean the space bar and the fire button on the joystick, the first fire button on the joystick. Um, so if that's pressed, and our fuel, we've got fuel, uh, then we decrease our fuel and we, um, we draw our fuel bar again and then depending on our direction we go to a different line which are the lines following um, else we stop some sound and we go to 320 so that's probably uh, the next section so these, and these lines that follow, so 230, 240, 250 uh, to 60, 70, all the way to 300, they all change the velocity based on which way the sprite is going and then puts the flame in the right direction. So we don't need to look at all of those exactly. So we'll look from three, um, yeah, 310 to 
to 360. Uh, we make us we do some sound statements here, so that would make the noise of the thrust. Um, and then on our direction, we actually go to a separate set of lines to um, to adjust our velocity appropriately. Um, now a little bit further. Yep, and we've got a bit of collision detection there. As I said, I'm not going to go into all of it, but it's just enough to get you started, have a bit of a look. And I'm quite happy for you guys to um, you know, download a copy. I'll put a link, direct link down below to the copy of the game. And um, we'll hopefully continue the series with the next game um, sometime soon. Because as I said, I like to work my way through and get a video of each of my old original games. Um, so... Alright, I'm Electric Adventures. Thanks to all my subscribers. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.